Hello and welcome to the premiere of Canvas. I'm Simon. And I'm Akuj. And today we're going to be looking at an artistic movement that has become increasingly popular, body art. We have some wonderful guests on the show today who are going to be helping us to pinpoint exactly what body art is and where it comes from. But up first is Husna Lahir, a talented henna artist based in London. Hello and welcome to the show, Husna. Hi, thank you for having me. No problem. Well, first of all, I absolutely love henna. I know it's got such a rich history across many different cultures. That's right. Husna, would you mind telling us where henna comes from and how it's different from other art forms? Well, henna is actually a plant and it grows in so many different places in the world. The art of applying henna can be traced all the way back to the ancient Egyptians. Really? As wow, far back as that? It can also be found all over Asia, Africa, the Middle East and in so many other places too. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Could you tell us about particular meanings of symbols in henna? Are there any popular designs or patterns? In my culture, um, the brides tend to have very flowery floral designs, mm -hmm. very beautiful and inspired by nature. Oh, wow. Well, we'd love to see how it's done in real time, so we'd be delighted if you could uh, show us some of the process here. We have a model sat right behind you, so uh, we'll catch up with you later on in the show. And in the meantime, we're going to take a look at something I know many of us at home might already have. Tattoos. Do you have tattoos, Simon? Uh, no, I don't actually, do you? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Okay, that's next, <laughs> next week's show. Uh, well, it used to be that tattooing was seen as quite aggressive. That's right, but not anymore, thankfully. <laughs> uh, well, we are off to a tattoo studio now to find out why we love tattoos so much. And from there, we'll be talking to one young artist about some tattoos she's designed using something called the stick and poke method. Hi, my name's Joey Inks. I'm the owner of Joey Inks Tattoo Parlour. Tattoo has been my passion ever since I was a kid. I've always been into art, I've always been into the things to do with creativity and I just wanted to do the job that I love. So I decided to open a tattoo shop and do my dream. As a fan of my own work, I sort of like to have it on show. My arm, for example, I did myself. So this is my own artwork. So it's more, not for other people to look at, but just for me to display. keep going into shops and showing them your work. A lot of people will just, you know, tell you go away or they don't like your work, but you just need to keep doing it. Be able to do like that on someone's skin. Me. I'm there, little mum and dad. When I was 16, some guy in Woolwich, um, Jack Tattoo, so you blind him one night, cost him two pounds. Tattoo is just taken over the planet. Everyone wants a tattoo now. Your nana wants a tattoo. Your kids will want a tattoo, but they have to wait till they're 18, unfortunately. Like people, when they get tattoos, it's very much like, I've got this to represent this. But with stick and poke, I feel like it's, it's far more relaxed. So people get things because they think it looks cool or they just want like a line on their finger. Some of those tattoos were absolutely incredible, weren't they? They really, really were. Mm. And it's amazing to think that tattoos have been around for so long as a body art form. Yeah, it definitely is. Well, from tattoos to fine art, the human body has always been a wonderful subject for artists to explore. And right here in the studio, we have our next guest. As the youngest participant in history to win a first attempt in the 40th annual Bahraini art show, he held a number of solo and group exhibitions across London and Bahrain. He's a young emerging fine artist with a vivid and unique style. Joining us today, Salman Al-Najm. Hello. Before we ask you a few questions, 
let's introduce you and your work in more detail. Well, first of all, thank you, Salman, for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> um, in your recent TED talk, you emphasised the importance of one's own cultural background. In what ways has yours influenced your work? Um, firstly, I want to say that it's very important for one to understand and be accustomed to their culture because mm, um, definitely. Uh, given the fact that we are going to a very global approach in this world, it's very important for one to um, to grasp what is unique, which is which is the culture that makes everyone unique and different. Yeah. And uh, it's a state of mind, and I, I take that with me while I paint. So speaking of culture, would you say you take influence from the cultures around you? I don't really take influence from cultures around me, but I use them as a way of uh, comparing my cultures to others to gain a better understanding of the two. Okay. Leaving the cultural aspects of your work and moving on to the body, how do you view the body in relation to your own art? I feel like painting is a very physical form of art. It's, um, it's a physical practice and I do work in a very big size. Mm. So uh, my body does play a major role in, in my mark making while I paint as I move on the painting and around the painting. Mm. So as a um, young and up and coming artist, why do you think your work is important in the world today? Um, I feel like I have an interesting take on adding significance to what is deemed insignificant. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, an example of this is the differentiating between modernizing and westernizing. I feel like a lot of cultures disregard their own and uh, copy the West to simply uh, westernize instead of modernizing their own traditions uh, to gain um, a more uh, diverse uh, kind of design. Look, yeah, it's a really okay. interesting and uni unique way you go about it. Um, and finally, just before you go, what is your next project going to be about? Uh, I'm currently working on um, a short n fictional novel that uh, means to uh, differentiate between uh, traditionalism and modernity. It's also uh, set in a dystopian future in the wow. Middle East. <laughs> 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 really exciting. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Salman, thank you so much for coming thank in today. Thank you very right? much for having thank me. You. Thank you. And we wish much. you the best of luck in all your future. Thank you very much. We certainly do. Right, uh, now let's see what Husna's up to. Oh, wow, Husna. That's really, That's really amazing. amazing. Could you tell us more about the central theme in this piece of henna? Um, this design is very instinctual. I use my imagination, just sort of free-flowing design. It's been influenced by how I'm feeling, how my beautiful model's feeling, the energy <laughs> in this room. Mm -hmm. This design will never be the same in any other situation. Wow, that's <laughs> very, deep. very unique. Yeah. <laughs> very deep. Uh, obviously, the henna has been applied. Uh, what should you do once the henna's been applied, and how long does it usually last for? It's very simple, really. You just want to leave it on for as long as you can. The longer it's on your skin, the darker the colour and the longer it lasts. Traditionally, we would put lemon and sugar on the henna to s make it sticky for even longer, so it'll last even longer. Okay, Amazing cool. stuff. So as you can see, Husna is a really talented henna artist with a great eye for detail. If you want exquisite work of art on YouTube, visit Husna's webpage for more information. And if you'd like to give henna a go yourself, Husna will soon be teaching the process all across London, so definitely get in touch. But now, Amazingly, we've, uh, we've reached the end of the show. Great show. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll and see you next week. See you week. soon. Thank you. Bye.